Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jesse Nyberg podcast. Today I have on a super cool guest, uh, some wild hair going on. It looks really cool though. And then <laughs> uh, I found her actually through another YouTuber, designer, girl. And then I um, asked her if she wanted to be on. She makes some really cool poster design, a lot of music, merch design, indie stuff. And um, yeah, so how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, where are you from exactly? Um, I'm from Baltimore uh, and I grew up there and I went to school there, but I moved to Manhattan about a, a little over a year ago. So I've been living here, but I go back and forth between New York and Baltimore. Oh, okay. Is that, that's kind of close, right? Or not really? Yeah, it's like, it's like three and a half hours by train. So it's, it's not like super oh, really? far, but it's not like really close. So what school did you go to in uh, Maryland? I went to MICA, Maryland Institute College of Art. Oh, okay. It's like the only art art school, I think, or art college in the city. But it's also the oldest, fun fact. It's like 1826. Because I know so they it was have... Established, um, so. They have a, what's it called? Like RISD or whatever around there. And that's like... The well, Mecca. RISD is in Rhode Island. Right. Yeah. Rhode Island, but that's like the schools. Harvard of art schools. Yeah, it's interesting because an actual Harvard or Stanford or something doesn't really mean anything for like a graphic design degree. It's just kind of like going to another normal school. Surprisingly, Yale is like the top school for photography. Yeah. It's like a really hard program. So when I was, because I majored in photo, um, everyone was like thinking about doing like grad school at Yale. And it's just it's really funny to think though. about how one of the Ivy Leagues is like, yeah, it's like one of the top contenders for like photography. Yeah, one of my professors and I went to um, CSU Chico in like Northern California. And one of my professors, his name was Frank. He went to like his master's is from Yale. And um, I don't know, it was like communication design or something. And he had uh, when he was there, it was like Paul Rand who was like a professor and shit and like all these like super OG designers and I guess her, him and his wife was another professor they would always say like you guys have it easy they would just like bring us up in front of the whole class and like tear us apart for like an hour and everyone would cry and stuff so yeah. it sounds, sounds intense so um yeah anyway, how did you get like into designing and stuff if you started with photo um yeah so I Got my degree in photo and then I kind of moved um, to New York and I got a job doing like digital content creation for beauty and skincare marketing agency. And so I was doing like a bunch of social media stuff for them. And so that was like a bunch of social media, like uh, Instagram stories or like quick design videos and like mm -hmm. sometimes product photography. But then after that job um, kind of fell through, um, I ended up getting sucked into healthcare for like the money because I needed something stable to like keep me in the city. So I was working like a really crappy like desk job and it was not creative at all. So I would just be doing like operations and like really ter like things that I just like hated. And so there was no time to do like photo stuff. So once I would get yeah. home, um, from like a nine to five, I was like, what's something I can do that's like creatively challenging and like something that I can do for my portfolio. And so I had friends who were doing work for bands. And so I was like, oh, what if I just start like making posters for fun? And like, cause I had like some design background, I was designing like photo books and stuff, um, in college and my thesis was kind of design based. Like layout but design kind of and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, these people are doing like cool poster designs. Like I'm going to try to. And so it was like trial and error Photoshop and just like every day is like making a poster. Like, I don't know, just have something to do. Mm -hmm. So you're like uh, you went to school for photography and then all your design stuff is mostly self-taught and like online resources. Oh, yeah. All of it. Yeah. I I started doing like officially like moving from photography to design like uh it's like around around this time last year actually 
Um, so not long at all, but sometimes yeah. it's like weird. Yeah. I feel like I have like imposter syndrome because there are people who like went to school for mm-hmm. design and not that you have to, you have to go to school for design because I don't think you have to, but it's like weird. Cause I feel like I've accomplished a lot of cool things in like the span of a year. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even like, like, I, I still feel like I know like 10% of like what other designers know. And I feel like I don't really know like everything that they do and like all the cool like tricks. Like I don't even know how to use illustrator and like all that weird yeah. stuff. Like feels I feel fake, like you but, have, like, um, I mean, that's impressive that you've done all that. And I've seen your stuff online considering uh, you've done that in like a year basically because that's the harder part to learn all the composition and like you have a really unique style and I feel like you've worked with these super cool clients and things and yeah even if you're saying you may need um, some of the technical skills or, or something like that or an illustrator or whatever um, that stuff is all a lot more objective like you can learn that at any time it takes a long time usually for someone yeah. to learn like aesthetic and things like that that I think probably the photography background gave you the right like approach yeah. or mindset to designing yeah I also just feel like in art school you see so much art that like and I and I feel like with design design is everywhere so like we see it and we pick up little things that we like and then we sort of incorporate it it's like when you open up a photoshop document you're like all right what have i seen before that i liked Mm -hmm. your brain like sort of racks through every cool design that it's ever seen like picked up like little techniques and stuff like that so i feel like everyone can be a good designer if they want to they just it's like a muscle you kind of need to like keep working on it yeah um when you were saying you did uh, like every every day or whatever you're saying after your job a lot of people don't have the discipline or just like the I don't know mental like bandwidth to do that sometimes after working like a job so if you don't have a job that fulfills you and you're not driven enough to do it on the after hours it's going to be really hard for you to get better and things like that yeah it's like you have your nine to five job that like keeps you paying rent and like it gives you food and stuff. But then like the real job and the real work is after yeah that job ends. Unless you work at like a super when you're cool doing agency the real work. or something, you know? Yeah. But that was not the case. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily it was not like a super draining job. There were hours where I was just sitting there doing nothing because it was like a, I don't know how to explain it, but it was like a weird like assembly line sort of job where like we would have this queue of like um, work that would come in to the document that we would like sign it out and then work on the PDF, like mm-hmm. five edits and then send it back. And then you just like wait around for the next thing. So it wasn't like it was labor intensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So some of those jobs, like, though, they've uh, like those jobs that I've had that are more corporate or boring or anything. I've gotten a lot of like my work, most of my work done because there's so much downtime and like the, no one there gives a fuck about what's going on. So they're just like, sure, do whatever you want. If nothing's happening. Yeah. Sadly, um, I was using a work computer, so I didn't have any of my stuff. But, like it would be weird because I would be on the work computer and then on my phone, like trying to do stuff like other stuff, like, uh, man, like, manage alt citizen and like because i was doing like editorial stuff for them and like plan a photo shoot for this so i felt like i was like working a double life (laughs) right um you have a i feel like you have a very specific style like this um high energy like very saturated pop color kind of like your room even too it's all kind of like that (laughs) yeah Um, gold typography and things and i was going to ask you originally i had in in some of my notes when did you start developing that? But I feel like that must have been kind of your style from the very beginning if you've only been doing stuff for like a year. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of hard because like I feel like 
I don't really like I I'm way too critical of my own stuff. And sometimes I like look at everything I made and I'm like, none of this looks the same. It all looks like jumbled mm-hmm. up and like, I don't have a style, blah, blah, blah. There are things that I like go back to and like constantly use like colors. It's like one of them. But I think mm-hmm. like just having music as like my main inspiration, like most of my aesthetic is like pulled from like seventies and eighties, like punk artwork and like mm-hmm. those kind of colors. Um, and uh, yeah it's just stuff like that um i feel like it's still since i'm like still starting out it, everything's bound to change but like right. i think i think it's good to like it, it's okay to like not have a style but i don't know like there are things you will always gravitate towards but like i feel like having if you're like dead set on one style it's like kind of limiting so yeah. like if you feel like you want to yeah, if you want to branch out, you totally can. Um, well, some so, stuff becomes uh-huh. like some communities in the design world do just become kind of like feedback loop, like echo chambers of just style that they keep making the same stuff, all these people, yeah. because that's all they're seeing. Oh, I talk about this following. all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. No, we're all just making the same work. And I, I, I was like, it was weird because going into this was like, like, oh my God, I have to be like a unique designer. I have to like uh, do something that no one else is doing. I have to find my own unique style, but like, we're all making the same work and nothing is original. Like we're all just kind of borrowing from each other. So it's like less about making something that's original and unique and like having a unique style and more about just like making the work you want to do and like yeah. that you like. Um, my and problem I is I important. like too much, like the things that I do like, they're not similar whatsoever. So I have a hard I, time developing yeah, I feel a style you. because when I do like posters or album art, I like stuff a lot more like maximalist and just fun. And then when I'm doing like branding and logo identity and stuff, I'm really into like minimalism and like logo types and like less is more. So they're, yeah. they're obviously not the same. So depending on the project I'm working on, it's a completely different approach and like just entire mindset. Um, one thing that I saw that you worked on that I was very jealous of was the Alfredo like stuff because oh my that god album yeah was that was so good fun how did you it is how did one that of the top happen? of the year for sure um yeah so I do freelance work for Second City Prints and they're like a merchandise and they provide like creative services for artists and their teams and so um, Freddie is team is uh works through second city and so we got a pitch to do um a merch drop for the new alfredo um store so i sent some stuff in and um yeah it was weird because i was like stressing about that a lot because i love that album I was like oh my god i need to make something that like his team will actually like and like yeah. want to put in the store and so i seriously made something like two days before everything was due and i was like i don't even know like i'm sending like two or three things let's hope one of these gets picked mm-hmm. and it was cool because i just like remember where i was and i got that email and i was like yeah he wants the shirt and i was like yeah yeah. And it hits my boyfriend's handwriting on the back. So it's like even cooler. Cool. So it's like a cool collaboration. But yeah, that was wild. When they and dropped especially the, the like, website, I was like, I really liked the whole yeah. collection of it. It's like a store or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. And they keep doing more drops. They, um, yeah, it's like even weirder because I was supposed to get a shirt as like a, like a sample shirt but i went to like go to try to buy it and it was like sold out in every size and i was like that's so cool <laughs> yeah that's like bittersweet kind of because you wanted it but then also yeah. everyone else wanted it more and they bought it all up yeah i love yeah. freddie gibbs and alchemist and all those dudes are yeah. super badass um so what was i gonna say oh i so i was speaking to this earlier i found out about you through like kel on um twitter or instagram or something i think she retweeted you or something and uh, i was wondering do you guys know each other or are you guys like friends or something oh yeah kel's like my best friend <laughs> really? okay um yeah yeah we talk like every day about all things design music but yeah we're kind of like really close in that way which is great okay so. that's cool because i know 
some people I know online and see other people who know each other. Sometimes I don't know like if they're friends or she just really liked your work too, or you like you guys are like work together or whatever. Cause I saw that. I think she worked on some of that stuff as well. The Alfredo stuff. Yeah. We both work with, um, second city. And so, okay. So that's, that's cool. the same merch company. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, um, so I noticed that also you have like a super high interest in all the like, um, new wave and indie and like old type of music and all that. And, mm -hmm. um, you have, uh, like a page also with like vinyl and things like that. I was looking at, I wore the, um, my Lou Reed shirt and kind of oh, nice. with the Amazing. theme. <laughs> So um, is there anything that you've been listening to lately or have discovered recently that we can give to the viewers while they're designing? Ooh, um, let me think. Well, it's funny because um, like a long time ago, my boyfriend was like, oh, like I don't get the talking heads hype. Like I think they're overrated. And now he's been like on a kick with them. Yeah. And so because of that, it's kind of brought my love back for it. So like my go-to design album is the live Stop Making Sense okay, record. Cool. Um, it's like my comfort album um, because so many of the songs on there are just like so much better live. There's so much energy mm -hmm. and it kind of keeps the momentum going for design. Um, but yeah, I feel like there's a good talking heads record for every kind of design mood. So yeah, they have a very, um, good sound for continuity and like flow when it comes to like listening to an entire album all the way through. Like there's obviously yeah. like peaks and valleys with like David Burns, like eccentric self. Sometimes it's like something will just be real weird all of a sudden out of nowhere. But for the most part, their, yeah. like, their sound is very comforting and like, do you, do you mostly listen to kind of that type of music when you're working or do you listen to like podcasts or anything like that? Yeah, I mostly just mindlessly listen to music. I actually like, I, I don't really listen to podcasts ever. Like I find, I, I think like if I were to listen to a podcast while trying to design, I feel like it'd be too much going on at once. Someone's trying to like speak to me and I'm trying to like understand the conversation of like yeah. what's going on while I'm trying to design something. Whereas if it's like a melody or like something like that, it's much more easy to like stay focused. Um, most of the time it's like energizing music too. So it's pretty mindless. Yeah. I find that my catalog of music when it comes to like when I'm working is very different from what I would listen to outside of work because um, I get really distracted by any type of like even lyrics, you know? So I really like listening to like house or like jazz or just things that have a lot more like background to them and it's not going to distract me because right. if it's like hip hop or punk or hardcore or anything like that, I'm, I'll get like too into it. And, and then I'm thinking about the lyrics in my head and same with like what you said about listening to the conversation. I feel like it will influence whatever I'm doing. I'll start writing yeah. those words or something in like my type. Yeah. Most of the time, if I'm like designing a poster for either just for fun or like for a client, like I'll listen to the music of whoever I'm working on and it'll kind of, it just seems like appropriate. So That's I do that. That's what, um, the guy that I interviewed for my last podcast named uh, Stigil, he does a lot of redesign of album art and things that are kind of like in his style. And he told me the same thing that he listens to, um, whatever artists that he's working on. And I never really thought about doing that, but when he said that it, it makes sense because obviously you want the, the art and like the branding to reflect upon like what kind of sound they have and everything. Yeah. Um, it kind of helps with clients too, because like just kind of get a better idea, like, especially it's just like their energy. Sometimes you can match like colors and like aesthetics like that. Um, and so it's like a good little tip if anyone is like needs help with that. Right. So uh, you've been living in Manhattan, you said. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how has it been over there? Like with everything going on, has it changed the way that you're working a lot in like post or 
during COVID, however you want to call it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's weird because I, I feel like the city is very, we're being very good about COVID. Like everyone wears masks, everyone mm-hmm. tries to like keep their distance. But I think like over the past few months, we've gotten like too comfortable. There's like a lot of people going out to bars and like a lot of people, I don't know, just like getting a little too comfortable and like sitting close to each other, like outside. So I think we're entering like phase four or something of like making sure everyone's like actually being safe. But as far as like working, there are most days where I just like don't leave this apartment because there's no real reason to besides like getting coffee. So because like all my work is online. I feel the same way. it has changed some of my workflow and things, but at the at the same time, it really hasn't because I did a lot of work from home anyway. So, but now it's funny because yeah. I work a, my day job, it's a day job, but it's still like heavily design related. It's not like um, insurance or whatever, but um, I find myself, it's funny because I, I'll get off work and all I do is just like move something away from my screen and open up like another screen and I'm just kind of in this office like chair all day and if I don't make an attempt to get up and like go walk to the store get coffee like I probably won't you know I'll just sit here all day and yeah screen um yeah so did you do a lot of your work um at home and things before that or were you working with this like merch um, company in their office or something. Yeah, well, it's funny because I had the healthcare job until like the beginning of February and then I quit. Actually, I quit around the time where it was like the worst timing ever because I quit and then a week later, COVID That's what I did. (laughs) Um, It was really not smart, but it was, I mean, how the fuck was I supposed to know? But It was just, yeah, so I quit and then kind of COVID like forced pretty much everyone into like freelance. It's like either you were furloughed or like you suddenly like have to be freelance. Um, And that was, I feel like March, April, May were like really difficult for all of us because we're all like either trying to sell our art to poor, like everyone who doesn't have any money or like trying to get, trying to get jobs and nobody was hiring so you have to like we were like getting creative so a lot of it was just like us posting all the time i'm available for work all over twitter and that's when like like one of the creative directors for a second city reached out was like hey you like should do some like freelance stuff for us so that's when that started like back in march which is funny because i made uh, my first like merch design for fun in in march so it was like i don't really know how i was recruited for that team god bless them (laughs) so yeah that's really cool and that's um very impressive and like you you obviously like developed enough of a a style or like they were attracted to you in a specific way to hire you because a lot of people i know um they would be like they definitely did not get hired after doing like their first thing you know it took like quite a, a long time to get to where like they felt they were doing like super cool stuff or whatever. Um, yeah. So do you mostly just do, uh, is most of your stuff merch design and, and like poster design right now, right? Yeah. I mean, mostly because of COVID artists are looking for to put out merchandise mm-hmm. and uh, um, a lot of album artwork uh, sometimes mostly like art direction for like social media stuff. Like sometimes like I just did some stuff for, um, two indie labels where they're like, we need some black Friday, like social media stuff. So it's like small things like that, that aren't going to like, like bring in the big bucks, but are like, yeah, like, like labels love that stuff. Like they always need that kind of stuff. So really anything that like pops in the inbox for emails. So it's like, doing that it's like merch drops and then also like doing my own designs and then like dropping that in my merch store um yeah do you have um 
like a favorite client or type of um, artist that you've worked with since you started? Mm. I don't know, cause I like the. I feel like it was super cool. That like I think that oh, represents thank you. your entire brand in like that one little <laughs> uh, type. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It was funny because that came from an era where like from March to like May, we were all trying to get creative with like how we were going to pay rent. And yeah. my way of doing that was like creating bootleg like band t-shirts. And so it was just like me like making a bunch of like fan made like t-shirts and selling them. And so I was just like sitting on the couch and I was just like, what if I made a cure one? Yeah. And then I feel like sometimes like the best ideas are born from like boredom. (laughs) Yeah. And then it became a whole thing. Do you have, um, speaking of that, how have you been kind of trying to stay motivated and inspired, like, especially without not being able to go anywhere and just kind of being in the same little environment all the time? Is there any specific things you've been doing to keep that like passion? Um, I think, one of like the coolest things just like working in the music industry is that everything you do is like so exciting like even if it's for like the smallest artists you're like yes i love doing this because you're gonna love it your fans are gonna love it and like all this stuff and like that's the exciting thing about it so i feel like if i am even just like working on commissions like that will keep me motivated and even just like scrolling through like social media and like seeing what everybody else is making. I'm like, wow, this is so cool. Look at all these women making art and like sharing things and like going on Pinterest, scrolling through all this stuff and just like saving it for when I feel motivated to make something, listening to music. I mean, I feel like everything sort of keeps me motivated, but like, even when I'm not feeling motivated, I like let those like feelings stay because like, I feel like, we're so used to like always being motivated and always pushing stuff out yeah. so that if, yeah, if we want to like chill and just, you know, be a person and like watch a movie or something, it's like embrace that, take a break. Yeah. I, I could probably benefit from that. Uh, I find myself, uh, it's kind of, sometimes it's like a toxic, uh, trait that I have, but I find myself no matter what I'm doing, I'm like, all right, well, how could I like, I don't know, like sell this or make this into a thing that I promote. And it's like, you're just doing a hobby, like just do it and don't worry about trying to like yeah. brand it or anything like that. That sucks so bad, especially I literally just talked about this with somebody not that long ago. It's like all of us, like all designers right now, especially like trying to like make something and it's like, okay, well, how do I profit off of this now and sell it so I can make money to live? Yeah. And it's like, imagine design, not under capitalism. It would be so cool. <laughs> We'd just be making shit and nothing would matter. Yeah. It, it's, I, it's the same reason I, like I'm really into um, video games and stuff. And for a while I was streaming, um, like just playing games and it made me, it like ruined the innocence of just doing that to not because it was like all right here's your schedule like here's when you'll do this like how much donations are you getting and like subscribers and money or whatever and i was like this sucks it's not even fun anymore because like another job so yeah trying to be a lot more chill with not trying to go full on like greed on every little um venture i get myself into with uh yeah the second city do they just um, pay you by project or are you kind of like on staff yeah it's mostly by project um so if it's mostly um like when a project like an artist wants like a design that you've worked on they'll like usually pay you like a certain range and then go from there but it kind of varies based on the project and the the complexity do they ever um Uh, Are artists ever interested in getting work from you that was just created for another reason? Like, oh, can I use this for my band or whatever? Or is it mostly just custom? Um, It's mostly just custom, I think. Um, Have you ever made any fan art that got like the person approached you like, we want to use this? Um, Actually, yeah, I think... um, the first thing that comes to mind was 
I made, this is like probably the third post I ever made. I made a um, Black Midi was playing in Brooklyn somewhere and I made a poster for it and I tagged ad hoc in it, which I used to do work for them back when we could photograph shows. And they were like, yeah, this is, um, cause it was a, um, they are like a promotional, uh, event coordinator. And then they collaborated with live nation to host the, um, event. And so they actually contacted me and were like, live nation wants to buy this poster for like the official That's event. Cool. So that went on like their Facebook page and like all that stuff. So it really was just like making something for fun, tagging the right people and the right people seeing it. Um, which is why I always tell people like, just shoot your shot. Yeah. Cause the worst that could happen is if you don't do anything and then nothing happens, like just try something. That's like but, immediate um, gratification too. Cause you already did all the work. <laughs> like, here you go. Yeah. This. Yeah, fun. I, um, exactly. I've, I've talked to artists about that before because I know that you sometimes you see on like Instagram, there's those people that just make like all this shit and they're always saying like, you could buy this or whatever. And it's like, a I don't know, it's some kind yeah. of album art template or something. And that always seemed weird to yeah. me because if I was a musician or a client, I would want something made from the beginning of the vision that we're developing together, not just like, sure, I'll take this off your hands and like throw my name on it. Or yeah. Whatever. I mean, yeah, it totally depends. Cause like I've definitely back when I was like making merch, merch in March, just because like I wanted something to do and I would have all these like concept designs. I would be like on a call and be like, Oh, well, like if you, cause they would like pick out like certain designs that, I've done that they liked and I'd be like, well, you know, like that was just like a concept yeah. t-shirt. Like if you want to buy that design, you totally could, but it was most, it mostly boiled down to like, ah, eh, we'd rather like work from the beginning on something that's like totally like mine. <laughs> yeah. And if they're so. interested enough already to reach out and want to work with you, they're probably not too worried about like just getting that quick. They will probably want to start from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. You were talking, um, you're saying online, you were sta staying um, inspired and looking at these other uh, female designers. Is there any specific people you want to like put on that people can follow? You can Ooh, take your time yes, on that okay. and I'll edit it if you want, if you want to yeah. send me like three or um, four. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, definitely. Like the thing for me is like, I know these people in my head, but I probably would never be able to say their names out loud or like their username because like, I'm more of like a, I know what their work looks like, but I don't remember like names or I don't yeah. remember usernames. You can send so it to me if it's you want. Like, you could throw it in yeah, the for uh, sure. description and everything. I, d I definitely will, will because those are some great people that deserve some great shout outs. Cause it's hard when, I know it's hard when I gave you no, uh, note to that or whatever and then I'm just like who do you, you want name all these people because sometimes some of my favorite people yeah. as well that I follow I don't even know how to find them on my own following I just know it when I see it I know I me know too to I have to like yeah sometimes I'll have to go and I'll have to like save a post of theirs mm -hmm. so I can just like go and like find them they'll have like a really bizarre like interesting username and I like don't right. remember what I'm searching for or go back in my posts you've liked like try to find it from there i can never find the post you've liked either every time i had to look up online how do i get yeah the that's just that like yeah it's it's interesting because i feel like a lot of people feel that way like they they dissociate the like username and like the your name from the work that you make they think of you as your body of work and, and less so your username because i had this problem because i was like i'm in this process of like rebranding from Julia Fletcher mm -hmm. photo to studio because like I don't just do photo anymore and I asked people like should I do this like do you does this bother you or whatever like me having the photo username and people were like well I always associate you by your icon and like your work not I don't really read your username I was like that's interesting so the icon is huge <laughs> like uh, yeah a lot of people know mine uh that are my friends and things just because it's like the glue and that um that's like, was like all my friends in college, like just called me and things. So that's easier for that. But in terms of the icon, I've changed my picture before lately. I've just had like the smiley face. Cause I like things that 
aren't really just like myself, more just like a little graphic or whatever. Yeah. And um, I've changed this stuff in the past, maybe like every year or whatever. And people are like, I couldn't really find you anymore. Like I couldn't see the little smiley face <laughs> at the top in my story. So I didn't know if you weren't like making anything. And it's interesting because I feel like a lot of that you don't think about when you're like some people have ridiculously long names or like super cryptic things that I'm never going to be able to search and they're super talented and I want yeah. them to get all the success that they deserve. But if your name like starts with numbers and things, it's hard to just get that in the suggestion or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or you have like a different alias on like every uh, different social media. It's like confusing. I feel bad if your name's like John smith or something you know you have to have all these weird extensions on it and stuff because there's no way you're gonna get like the og one but it is yeah. what it is so it's, um, yeah it's wild one thing last thing i wanted to ask you is if uh is there anything that you're working on currently that you're excited about that you can speak about well, um, everything's kind of slowing down right now mm -hmm. because like with the holidays. Um, so I just did a merch drop for Francis Forever. They were like blowing up on TikTok. Oh, I and so that. I did like this, cool. they're like space girl, yeah. like shirt, which was really cool. Like my friends, one of my closest friends, like a manager for them. So I'm going to start doing like more art direction for them. So that's exciting. Um, that's probably like the only thing on like the horizon right now. Like other things would just be like various album artwork I've done for like some smaller indie artists that like drop like the next few months. Like that's the worst when you're like working on like a merch item or like album artwork and you have to wait several months for it to yeah. drop. It's like, I've been keeping this a secret for yeah. five months now. I can't wait to share it with you guys, but yeah, that's yeah, essentially it's all like, it. It's mostly like NDA stuff, right? when you're working with the artists like that. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks because I won't always want to, you get so excited, you want to put it out like right away. And they're like, all right, well, we're releasing it in spring. So you're going to have to wait. Yeah. And you're like, oh, <laughs> well, you just have to say like something cool coming in five months. Like, yeah. Uh, That's why it's good to always be making your own stuff and staying driven like any type of creative you are. So you're not, stuck not having any content yeah. or things to share with everyone is there any um for sure tips or uh, advice you would give to anyone that's trying to get into working with musicians or artists merch design anything music related yeah um me and Kel talk about this all the time and like I always tell this to people who like either message me or email me to like manage your expectations for things because a lot of people um they're like okay I want to design and I want to design in the music industry and then they're just like immediately like I want to design for like I don't know like Harry Styles like immediately and yeah. I'm just like that's not let's let's be a little a little realistic here um you just you gotta start like make sure you got your portfolio and everything and like make sure you like have these real life like connections with smaller artists and like mm -hmm. build like real client work and like stuff like that and then you can like it's because music industry like working in that kind of stuff it's all about like who you know it's not really by luck sometimes it is but like it is mostly about who you know and then they hire you based on like referral so right. a lot of a lot of networking is helpful but reaching out and working with smaller indie artists and then kind of building your way up from there but definitely managing expectations that's a great one i think a lot of people are uh, have a what's the word they're like like something a kinder for delusional is what i'm thinking of but they come in like yeah yeah i like i know these people that have been working for 20 years and they're barely getting into working with people of that caliber or whatever so it's smart because if you have lower expectations, you, you're more likely to feel satisfied when working with these smaller things and stuff. So, Yeah. And like sometimes I feel dumb like saying that because like I feel like so much has happened for me like in a year and I feel like very yes. grateful for that. But but it was just like 
I don't know, like in a way, it's just like who you know and also luck. It's like a little combination of both. Um, so when anybody asks me, like, how'd you do it? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I, yeah. I have no advice for you besides like just working on it and just being persistent um, and being motivated and just keeping at it because that's all you can do. It's better than not doing anything at all. Right. Yeah. And um, what you were saying, uh, if you're even more want to look into some of that stuff, Kel put out that music um, client like PDF thing. So I'll, I'll try to put that link to her website as well into the description. Um, is there anything yeah. else that you want to plug or what are your, your, all your names everywhere and things like that? Um, okay. Yeah. My Instagram is Julia Fletcher photo, which will eventually change once I rebrand, but nothing to worry about right now. Twitter is Julia EF underscore. Cause I can't fit in the full thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are, those are pretty much the, and then on YouTube, it's just like, if you search Julia Fletcher, it should come up. But like, I use my name for everything because like, I'm not, I don't know. It's more of a professional thing and like yeah. a business thing. Um, I'm not someone who can come up with like full usernames. I think my TikTok is like alt Miss Frizzle or something, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> other than that, like, you know, it's just, it's just my, my name. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate you coming on. It's really interesting. To yeah. Hear thank you for, this is my stuff. first podcast. So right, well, very exciting. It's good to get that out of the way. And then I was nervous doing the first hosting one. So, um, this will be probably coming out like after Christmas. So I'll let you know and I'll send you the link and everything. And um, thank you again. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, go check out Julia. I'll throw all her links in the description, everything. So see you next time. All right. Goodbye.